The thing the devil don't want is people to hear truth. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want the devil does everything he can to deceive and stop people from hearing truth. Yeah. I remember when I was out on Saturday night, I'd be coming back home Sunday morning from someplace wherever I was at. I turned the radio on in my car, and you know, trying to flip the channels there. And see, I, you'd accident, I'd accidentally get some preacher on there, you know. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, the Bible says, click. I didn't want to hear that. When you're in darkness, you're unsaved, you don't want to hear that. Or if you're not right with the Lord, you know, as a saved person, you don't want to hear that. And uh, the devil wants to keep you blind. The devil doesn't want truth out. That's why eventually you won't be able to preach a lot of truth. Yeah. Through a lot of these ways you can do it now. And uh, they'll, they'll censor it right now. They're, the country's in the process of doing that right now, really. Yeah. But uh, here in the next 10, 15 years, probably at the most, uh, a preacher told me, he said, Brother, Ugly, he said, you better preach against this junk you're preaching against now on the radio, YouTube, and Facebook, and all this stuff. He said, because the time's going to come. He said, they're not going to allow it. They'll cut you right off. Yeah. Or they'll do like you do in Canada. You preach out against homosexuality and lesbianism. You go to jail. It's a hate crime. Yeah. You hate people. The devil doesn't want evil exposed. Richard Wormbrand said before the communists came in and took over, he was put into a, uh, a, not a, like a concentration camp, but kind of like a place of torture. And Richard Wormbrand said before the communists came in and took over, they, he said we were allowed to say God is good, but we weren't allowed, we weren't allowed to say the devil is bad. Yep. In other words, all you're allowed to say is positive things. Positive. God is good. God loves you. God loves you. God wants to kiss you and hug you. And you want to kiss and hug God. Because God loves all of us. And God loves the animals. And God loves the, the crocodiles and the alligators. And just love, 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 love. So before the communists came in, we were allowed to say God is good. We weren't, weren't allowed to say the devil is bad. And when you say the devil is bad and the wicked evil sins of the day, you are a hate monger. You have got to go to sensitivity training. Yeah. You know what this sensitivity training is in a lot of these corporations, a lot of these places that you work at? It's to get you to accept people that have uh, wicked lifestyles. Yeah. And for you to not think that that's wicked, that who are you to judge? Yeah. They're allowed to live the way they want to live. You're a hate monger. We're throwing you in jail, buddy. Yeah. That's what this country is coming to. Yeah. Better witness now while you can. Yeah. Might be in shackles before it's over with. Yeah. We were talking about that today. Sitting there eating today. And uh, I said this. I said... Who do we think we are? Do we, are we better than the first century Christians? Right. Yeah. A lot of Christians think they are. Yeah. Where do you get that from? How do you get that? Am I greater than? Am I better than Paul, the Apostle Paul and John and Peter? Are you kidding? And they died, got killed. Yeah. And it wasn't just them. Much of them did. Really, the first two or three centuries, but the first that first century. Time of Christ, the next hundred years, two hundred years, and then and what about Fox's Book of Martyrs? You ever read that? During the uh, uh, the Reformation, there and John Huss was burned at the stake. Savon Roland, they literally took these guys and put them on a, on a wooden thing there and put a bunch of hay and a bunch of junk around them and lit it and burned them alive. Uh, yeah. Unless they were canon. you got to read Fox's Book of Martyrs sometime. Yeah, feel like you're lost. You feel like you're unsafe. <laughs> I mean, you'll be so ashamed of yourself. You'll say, you know, because I mean, some, most a lot of Christians, you know, they stub their toe and they can't go to church for 25 years. But, <laughs> anyways, uh, that's what I'm saying. What I'm what I'm trying to tell you is, is that you read this stuff. I'm talking, and it's not just men; it's women too. Yeah. They used to put cages on, on on a man's head, and or a woman's head, their wife or sp their spouse put a cage and put racks in it and they would eat and gnaw at their head. Yeah. They'd eat their head. They'd scald them to death. 
you ought to read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Yeah. And uh, you say, who is responsible for that? Rome. Amen. Well, you say that, you'll get. You know why the public school never taught you that? Because the public schools are pro Catholic. So is the news media. Yep. You ever notice during Easter and Christmas, who's on the television talking to millions and millions of people? The Holy Papa. The Holy Pope. Yep. They call him Father, and he dresses like Mother. Yeah. The most damnable religion in the world. Yeah. It's 17 centuries. Yeah. 17 centuries. It's the truth. I'm, talk, I'm not talking about the people, and I'm talking about the religious system. Yeah. You have to differentiate. When I talk like this, people get you know they get uneasy. You know, they get because we've heard a bunch of slop for 100 years by the news media. Yeah. Don't attack other people's religions. Sure, the devil don't want you doing that because he don't want people hearing the truth. Romans 9, verse uh, 6, Not as though the word of God hath, hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. All right? Uh, so some of the covenant children, some of the Israelites got saved. For example, Paul. Paul was a covenant child. He was a Jew. He was a covenant child. Not as though uh, the word of God hath taken none effect. Uh, verse 6. Well, the Word of God has taken effect. Let me tell you something, folks. You get the Word of God out, His Word will not return unto you void. Amen. And that, that you get that Word of God out. That is exactly what I've tried to do. I'm not perfect. I've got a long ways to go, believe me. But it, since I've been in the ministry, and especially these last 20 or 30 years, I have tried to just blast out truth in this pulpit, in pulpits, around the country preaching meetings and on radio stations. I just try to dispense truth constantly because God takes truth and works in people's hearts. It isn't me. I know that. It isn't me. It's His Word. It's His Word that does it. And so I just get I just get a bunch of seed. Is the seed yet in the barn? Haggai 2.19, the Word, the, the, which seeds the Word of God. Uh, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bring his sheaves with him. Psalms 126, 5 and 6. So I just take the seed like a farmer. I'm not a farmer, but I take the word of God like a farmer, spiritually, a preacher. I just take it, I just... Yeah. <laughs> For 43 years now. Eventually something comes up. God does something with it in people's hearts, in people's lives. Romans 9, 6, that not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Uh, but in Isaac shall I see be called, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. In other words, he's saying here in verse 6, 7, and 8, he's saying here, a man can be a literal, physical, visible Jew and be part of the chosen people, but not be a child of God. There's Jews today. They're Jewish people. They're part of the chosen people of God. The Jews are the chosen people. You know, people talk about who are the chosen people. Let me tell you, white people, black people, brown people, they're not the chosen people. Jewish people are the chosen people of God. Amen. They're God's chosen people. Yeah. A lot of times we Europeans, we Japhethites, we think here in America that we're God's chosen people. No, we're not. Right. Now, if you're saved, you are. I mean, you know, you're born again. But I'm saying as a general group of people, the Jews are God's chosen people. There's promises to that Jew in the Bible that are not given to anybody else. And God is not done with the Jews. 
He's temporarily set them aside. Blindness in part has happened to Israel. And then they're going to be restored. Romans 11, we're going to get into that a couple chapters now. In Romans 11, verse 25 and 26. Uh, so in other words, in verse 6 to 8 here, a man or a person can be a literal, physical, visible Jew and be part of the chosen people, but not uh, be a child of God. And now here in Romans 9, 6, Paul begins a discussion of the difference between the literal, physical, visible seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the spiritual seed typified by Isaac. And there is a more detailed, complete study on this subject in Galatians chapters 3 and 4. All right, uh, Romans 9, 9. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Now this word of promise, of course, is back in Genesis. Verse 10, and not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, that's self-explanatory, that's in Genesis, parentheses, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him uh, that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I love, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Uh, 16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Now, John Calvin used this verse, uh, Romans 9, 16, with Philippians 2, 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. To say this, this is what John Calvin taught. A person cannot even will to get saved. God has to will in him. Therefore, he removes the responsibility on the sinner. If the responsibility of the sinner is removed from getting saved, how can God damn a soul? How can God send a soul to hell? Justifiably. Is that the God of the Bible? The God of the Bible, as I said, I believe before, God says, you over here, you are predestinated before the foundation of the world. This is what John Calvin taught. God said, you're my elect. You're going to be saved no matter what you do. God's going to strike you down like he did Paul on the road to Damascus. They love to go to that conversion account of Paul. And God's going to strike. I didn't have a conversion account like Paul. I don't know about you, but God didn't speak to me out of heaven. But anyways, God's going to dan God's going to elect you to be saved, all you folks. You're all going to heaven. Don't have to worry about your end. You're in. Now you poor, precious people over here, you're all elected before the foundation of the world to be damned. There's nothing you can do. You don't have a will. Now the question is, how can God cast you into hell? The reason why a, a God, a justifiable God, can cast you into hell is because the sinner rejects, uses their own will to reject Christ. We believe that people are depraved. We believe that we're totally depraved, but we don't believe the will is depraved. The depravity does not, total depravity does not extend to the will. You say, how do you know? After the service is over tonight, you can will to go to Dairy Queen or you can will to not go to Dairy Queen. All right? You can will to go to McDonald's or you can will not to go to McDonald's. You can will to go straight home or you can will not to go straight home. You have a will. You're not a robot. Same thing with salvation. Same thing with serving God. Does every Christian serve God to the best of their ability? Is every Christian faithful to God? Well, Calvin says, For it is God which worketh in you both the will and do his good pleasure. By the way, Philippians 2.13, that's not even talking about an unsaved person willing to salvation. That's talking about a saved person. Philippians 2.13, For it is God which worketh in you. Talking to saved people in church of Philippi. For it is God which worketh in you both the will and to do of his good pleasure. If you let God work in you and through you, do you think every Christian lets God work through them? No. Absolutely not. Uh, so, uh, 
They use, they, they use these verses to teach that a person can't even will to get saved. God has to will in him. Completely ignoring the fact that the context of Philippians was talking about a man that has already been saved, Philippians 2.13, and ignoring the fact that Romans 9.16 here had nothing to do with a man willing to receive Christ. All right? What, what's he talking about here? Romans 9.16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. He's simply saying this. Listen real close. You cannot make God have mercy on you by exerting your will. You've got to do it His way. And God's way is Christ. Is Christ. That's why Ephesians 1.4 says, According as He hath chosen us in Him. He's chosen you when you get in Him. Calvin never could get that right. He thought it was you're chosen before the foundation of the world to be saved. And if you're one of God's elect, you're chosen in Him. But you're not chosen until you get in Him. Not everybody's in Him until they get saved. According as, he have, according as he have chosen us in him. When did you get in him, in Christ? Not in eternity, not before the foundation of the world you weren't in Christ. You were in Christ the moment you received him and not a second before. Someone says, well, we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. You were? Well, then you must have fell out of him because 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says, for as an Adam all die. Even so, in Christ, y'all, we made a lie. Right. Before you got saved, you knew who you were in? You weren't in Christ. You knew who you were in before the foundation of the world? You were in nobody. You weren't even born yet. All right? When you were born, you're in Adam. As in Adam, all die. Even so, in Christ, y'all, we made a lie. All right? So somebody says, they say, well, you were in Christ, then you fell into Adam, and now you're back in Christ. Well, how do you know that you, can, you can't fall back out of Christ and get back into Adam again? So the whole thing is ridiculous. And uh, once you erase a person's will, then the, the judgment is not justifiable. The great white throne judgment for unsaved people being cast into hell and the judgment seat of Christ. A Christian can sit at the judgment seat of Christ and say, no, I didn't serve you because I, could, I didn't have a will. I couldn't will to do it. You wouldn't let me will to do it, God. It's your fault, God. Your fault, man. You know why I didn't get saved? Because I wasn't one of the elect. But you can't damn my soul. Romans 9, 17. Uh, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, I don't really want to get into that. We'll get into that next time. That's a big long deal here. 17 to 24. And uh, we'll get into that more. But uh, uh, 